This is a solenoid pump. It's a really common pump used in smoke machines and snow machines, and they're very prone to clogging up, but you can generally fix them. And as this season is approaching sort of Halloween, then Christmas, this is a time that people will want to fix these machines, the smoke and snow machines. So let's demonstrate it running for a start. So I'm going to position it above this glass, and these pumps are two degrees self-priming. So I'm going to put this uh, pipe into the water. I'm going to hold the pump, because it's not grounded, uh, by the flexible hose at the back, and I'm going to power it up. And you'll see it's drawing the water along the hose, and then it will spray it out in a series of pulses. And the pulses are coming out at roughly... Uh, I'm just going to take that out and I'm going to run run it a wee bit more. They're happening, in this case, 50 pulses a second, 50 hertz. In America or other countries with 60 hertz, they would be 60 pulses a second. I'm just going to empty this out. Sudden loud hammering noise as it empties. OK. So this uh, is a cheapy Chinese one. There's a surprise. Imagine me buying a cheapy Chinese stuff. But having said that, it's pretty much exactly the same as you'll find in the other machines uh, anyway, because it's a really common mass-produced component. It's used in many applications. I have tested the power consumption in the Hoppy. It showed about 21 watts. This lists it as 18 watts, but our voltage is just a little bit spicier here, so that's probably why it was reading that a little bit higher. If you look at the cable leading to this, sometimes you'll see it actually on in line with the cable itself, or you'll sometimes see it on the circuit board. But there's a little component here. Let's zoom down on that just a wee tiny bit. So we get a component here, and that is a diode. And the reason the diode's there is so that this coil only operates in half wave. So that gives it time to pull the plunger back on one half of the wave, and then the plunger to go back again the other half. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to get rid of this glass of water before I spill it everywhere. And I'm going to take this completely to bits now so you can see what's inside and what goes wrong. So I'm going to start off by loosening this. This is quite often used to clamp the output hose in place. And there's a sort of little uh, stuffing gland there that holds a pipe in. Quite often in a smoke machine, this pipe would then be leading directly into the uh, actual heater head and the smoke flow would be going into the head via this. Um, and the reason it is a copper pipe directly is because it's subject to incredible heat in the heater block. So I'm going to put this back in. It's very simple. It's just a, a little threaded section that clamps down onto that grommet and then it grips it in place when you've put a pipe into it. I'll pull the hose off the other side because that's just a sort of barb for a hose. And to open these up, and keep in mind that uh, to get these out the uh, smoke tank in the first place, some of the cheapest machines, the ones that have the tank on the machine itself, it's actually wedged into the tank. There's a sort of like a really tight fitting bung that goes in and it's pressed in with such force it can be quite hard to get out. Sometimes you don't actually need to take it out the tank though because you can generally unscrew this bit. And when you unscrew this bit, it'll either come out as this complete core and all we've got here is literally a solenoid core, just wire wound round and round and round here in a plastic core, then the plastic core inserted into this housing and then crimped, and that is all it is. But uh, more often than not, you'll find that it just pops out and you'll this bit will stay in the pump. So what have we got here? We've got a seal. We've got a little O-ring seal that seals against this uh, part of the pump mechanism here. And the other end is just a press fit. And there's a spring inside as well. The spring is used to return the piston after the power goes off in each half cycle. So energised in one half cycle, the piston will pull in. That's the piston here. And the other half cycle will pop out again. So I'll just press these in. They're not needed at the moment. Here is the problematic bit here. This is a piston that gets pulled in by the magnetic force and then returns to the spring. So on each cycle, it's being energised, it's pulling out like that, and then it's going in again. So it's vibrating very quickly. You can hear it making splunging noises as I do that. Let's pull that out. And we've got a little uh, ceiling plate here. This is where it gets very wet, but not to worry. First thing that's worth looking at 
is this bit here. There's a spring put through. This is a basically magnetic core that's uh, the part of the moving part of the solenoid, and there's a spring put through from this side, and then a tiny. And I don't really, I really don't recommend. By all means, pull this up to clean it, but don't pull it out too far because if you manage to unhook this from that spring in there, it's very difficult to put back on and it's one of these things it's very small it will ping and you won't be able to find it so uh, as long as that's relatively clean and non-gunky that should be all right next thing in this uh, component in this is this rubber o-ring that's just purely for noise because when this is uh, locked in position this is basically a sort of like bulkhead if you will and when this pulls back and returns it slams against this brass washer uh, and without the brass washer, without the o-ring there, it would be really, really noisy. It would sound like an electric buzzer. It sounds like an electric buzzer already in most instances. Next thing, and here is the big culprit. Next thing in here, have I got something I can tweak this out with? I've got a pair of tweezers. Is the o-ring. Now, let's measure this because it it's... By far the biggest problem this o-ring for these machines jamming up It tends to if it's left in storage with uh, surrounded with specific liquids it can actually puff up and uh, I'm just going to measure that So I'm going to get my digital gauge in here Turn it on And I'm just going to close in this until it barely grips it this will probably be metric so Closing, closing, closing until it just barely grabs a hold of it. That is six millimeters outer diameter. And the inner diameter, well, the actual thickness of the material, the o ring, just gently close to the point that I grip this without uh, squeezing it because that would skew the reading. So I'm just going to try and put it in here. It's quite fumbly. Oh, that is that is not easy at all. I'm beginning to regret doing this. It's gripping it at exactly one millimeter. So the inside of that is four millimeters. The outside is six millimeters. It's a one millimeter diameter o-ring. And what actually happens uh, is that during normal use. That piston here is actually riding. That is the seal uh, that stops the liquid squirting out around that piston. So if it tightens up, and it does, it puffs up, it will grip that uh, shaft and it won't be able to move backwards and forwards. It just stops this moving. It's a really common thing. I've never had much luck trying to find uh, replacements for that, but I have recently just ordered some. Um, I tried other, you know, I tried kits of O-rings and none of them ever seemed to fit. The next bit I want out is in here. This is the actual, the cylinder itself, and it does come out. There's another component in here that is quite significant. So uh, just, I'm going to tap this on the table, but uh, to protect your ears, I'm just going to just uh, cut momentarily. Okay, that's me made lots of noise. That's me got it out. So here is the little cylinder itself, and it has a sealing o-ring in the back just purely so that when it's pressed in it seals against the back of this and there is also oh another wet component i'll just mop that up and this is the other valve the first valve is this little springy thing in here on the end of this which uh, as the plunger goes back against the liquid it kind of pulls open uh, and the liquid flows in and then as it pushes in again into the cylinder here this is just a simple little spring-loaded plunger that sits against the exit hole here and as it pushes in again it just pushes this plunger back and lets the liquid out and when it that's pulling this is, gets pulled into its seals now if you've got the version of this with the metal body a prime place for corrosion occurring and blocking this up is right in here if you actually clear this and, and you get something thin like a bit of wire and you poke it down the way and in the way you should be able to see when you poke the wire in you should actually see it appear down inside this if it doesn't uh, sometimes you've got sort of granulated muckers just built up in the corner because some of them are very small in the metal ones not so bad in the plastic ones they're much better it's quite a large hole going down there so reassembling this generally speaking once you've cleaned it sometimes it'll be full of gunk and dirt inside and you can 
separate the components, make a note of what they are because, you know, otherwise you can mix them up, although they're not too bad. There are about one, two, three, four O-rings in this and the spring uh, and then a sealing washer in this particular one. So uh, you can give this a wash out and check the piston. Now, if you actually put this O-ring back into the end of this uh, cylinder and then you press the o-ring into it. Keep in mind that this metal plate will actually push against that and it will spread it a wee bit. Feel the pressure as it's pushing in. There shouldn't be much pressure. It should be quite easy just to push that in and out. It should go in very easily without gripping too tightly. Um, if it is gripping too tightly, consider changing that o-ring in there or as a complete cheapskate attempted fix, as I've done in the past, that gets things going. If you take that out, you can use a Stanley knife, a really sharp knife, to just cut out a fraction of a millimetre, just a tiniest little uh, wedge, by taking it out first, putting it on a flat surface, and cutting a tiny little wedge out of it. Not really recommended. It, it means it's not going to be up to normal operation, but it can get you out of a hole when something like that has uh, gone wrong. So assembling this again, the first thing that we put in is this spring with the rubber plunger pointing up and the spring pointing down. We then press in the, uh, the I was going to say uh, piston, the, the cylinder, with its o-ring at the back. The o-ring is a close fit to this stem. And then we press that in, and in this case it's actually quite a tight fit. Many of the others it just pops out. Uh, then we get the little rubber o-ring in here on the surface of there. Then the brass washer is, would be next, but the best way to assemble it is to initially put the o-ring that's a close fit in this the anti-vibrant uh, noise o-ring, then the brass washer, then this goes into there, and then when you screw this back into here, it should all pretty much line up and seal together. And if you've done it correctly, then that should be it. Your pump should be operational again. But if the that o-ring is too tight, then it will inevitably cause problems with it. Another thing that can happen with smoke machines is that when the... Uh, heater block, if you've been using cheap liquid with, or make homemade liquid with tap water, which has got lots of uh, hard deposits in it, that uh, what happens when you put them through the smoke machine is that the liquid goes in and it gets expanded, it gets boiled, and it forms into tiny little droplets of uh, glycol mixed with steam. That's what creates the fog effect. But um, sometimes, uh, because it's basically distilling what you put through it, any deposits like salts or minerals will form inside the smoke machine pipe. And it's a very thin pipe. One thing that's possible to do is to flush these through from time to time with white vinegar uh, diluted with water. And that's, a, that's an acid. It basically descales it. And uh, it's a bit... You know, it's one of these things you have to do outside and it's kind of controversial. Some people say it is a good idea, some say it's bad. They used to recommend it in the smoke machine companies. But definitely do it outside because uh, the hot vinegar vapour in the air is just horrific. Uh, other things that can block... It, with a snow machine, there's not really an awful lot to go wrong. The worst thing is the actual snow fluid, which is basically just a, a surfactant, a, a detergent in water. And that means there's no lubrication at all for these pumps. When you put them into storage, they'll often sort of corrode inside. You can get a complete replacement pump for about £5, maybe $7 off eBay. So keep that in mind too. Also keep in mind that some of these have the diode in line with the lead and some have it on the circuit board of the smoke machine, but most of them now have the diode in line, so you can't really do anything wrong with this. And that's fundamentally it. That's what's in these. The snow machines, it's just a blower. If it's blowing air out then and not blowing the smoke fluid, the snow fluid through, then the pump is almost the prime suspect. If the... Uh, fog machine isn't pulling the fluid up. It, it could be a blocked heater or it could be the pump because, as I say, they're, they're just prone to failing. And the one reason they use these pumps is they're very cheap, they're very simple, and also they put through a very controlled amount of liquid. That little piston is pushing through a very precise portion of liquid on each uh, half wave of the mains. So that effectively makes it a sort of almost like a dosing pump, although not quite as accurate as a peristaltic pump. But they're very neat, and they are quite easy to service if you're if you're willing to take the risk and open them, and uh, possibly have springs and rubber grommets and things pinging everywhere.